Welcome to the EF5 Advanced Training from the University of Oklahoma's Hydro Meteorology and Remote Sensing Group. My name is Laura Labriola. Let's begin. This presentation is an outline and welcome to the EF5 Advanced Training. This is the outline. We'll go over the goals, the system requirements. We'll talk about what EF5 and CREST are. I'll show you the contents and organization of the training course. We'll talk a little bit about the University of Oklahoma, the Hydros Group, and NASA Severe. And then we'll also briefly talk about installing and uh, demoing QGIS and Towdem. The rest of this course for day one will also go over the ensemble outputs for EF5 and how to use distributed parameters. EF5 is the hydrologic model that we will be training you on. It stands for the Ensemble Framework for Flash Flood Forecasting. The advantage of this is that it's scalable to different resolutions, so you can use this for small basins or for really large scale ones. This means that EF5 can forecast the entire continuum of floods. And EF5 is not a single hydrologic model. It is a framework for hydrologic modeling. This means that there's multiple model cores and physics schemes that are possible that you can use with EF5. And we'll go over all of those ensembles later in this presentation. CREST stands for the Coupled Routing and Excess Storage. CREST is the hydrologic model developed by NASA and the University of Oklahoma. CREST-like model physics are part of EF5. And for the previous EF5 training, we only used CREST as the water balance model. But in the next presentation, we'll be going over all of the water balance models that exist in EF5. EF5 has a multi-model ensemble, and it's expandable with new models in physics. So the advantage of using these ensemble outputs is that you have multiple solutions, and you have this idea of an uncertainty in a forecast. EF5 is user-friendly. It lets you know if there's errors in your code, and it tells you which line and what is wrong with it. It's also cross-platform. You can use it with Windows, Linux, and Mac. For, these, uh, for this advanced training, we'll, we will be using Windows. And it also has flexible precipitation inputs. You can use Trim, MRMS, and Stage 4. We have many goals for this advanced training course. We're going to understand basic hydrologic modeling concepts. We're going to be able to locate and process digital elevation models, or DEMs, and create derivatives. We're going to locate and process forcing data. We're going to run EF5 and learn customization options. We're going to be able to improve model results through calibration and evaluation of model skill. We'll be able to interpret, analyze, and use these model results to show what's going to happen in the future. And then we'll give you the ability to set up, run, and calibrate, and use this model independently. Within this folder that you've downloaded, um, you have a folder for documents, for data, examples, presentation, and software. You can follow along with my presentations with the presentation folder, which contains five training modules in PDF format. Within the documents folder, we have papers about hydrologic modeling, we have the EF5 user manual, and we have summaries of various key parts of the training course. Um, these summaries can help you if you forgot what happened in the previous training course. We have uh, many examples in this advanced EF5 training course. We also give you the software, QGIS, Towdem, and the newly updated EF5. We also supply you with a data folder. In this data folder, you'll have PET, which is Monthly Global Potential Evapotranspiration from FuseNet. We give you precipitation, which is three-hourly uh, three global precipitation estimates from the TRIM mission. We also supply GFS uh, so that we can use it for uh, numerical weather prediction models, and we'll get that to that in day two of this training. 
We supply you with HydroSheds, which is um, hydrologic data and maps based on the shuttle elevation derivatives and multiple scales. And we also give you observations um, of stream flow for our training examples. In the documents folder, you can find the quick guides and checklists where you can see just a, a list of what to do when you're installing QGIS and TAUDEM, how you can evaluate model evaluation indices, how to process DEMs and derivatives. You can find the EF5 control file um, about me. You can also find the EF5 parameters and then properties of example basins. You also find the EF5 readme and then many scientific papers that show you um, peer reviewed um, information about the models that we use. So this is the overall training of the course. So day one, we'll go over the welcome, which is this presentation. We'll also go over ensemble outputs and distributed parameters. Day two includes the precipitation forcing with a numerical weather prediction. We also have inundation modeling. And finally, we'll end the advanced training course with multiple gauges and output grids. The contents of this training course um, in the software folder contains QGIS, TAUDEM, and EF5. And if you're following this after the foundation EF5 training, you should already have these um, downloaded. If not, you can follow along on this presentation where I'll uh, outline what to do, or you, could, or you should go back to the video um, for the welcome video for the foundation EF5 training, and you can follow along with the app video. We also give you the new version of EF5. The system, what are the system requirements for EF5? In general, EF5 is very flexible. However, the training should be completed with the Windows version of the software because that's what's provided and that's what we show in the videos. Um, it will at least run on Vista 7, 8, and 8.1. There is a 32-bit and a 64-bit version of EF5. So if you're running the 32-bit Windows, you'll use the 32-bit EF5. And if you're running a 64-bit Windows, you'll use 64-bit EF5. For this training, you will also need administer, administrator privileges for installing and configuring this uh, software. And you'll need about 5 gigabytes of disk space. That's because QGIS requires about 1.2 gigabytes. The .NET Framework 3.5 SP1 requires 500 megabytes. And then this training package is about 3 gigabytes. Finally, to actually show the, the results that we get, we'll need Microsoft Excel, and then we'll use the internet through Jupyter Notebook to uh, produce hydrographs. Um, so 32-bit and 64-bit versions of QGIS are also included in the software folder. And so you can choose this version based on your computer's needs. Cowden will install and run on either 32 or 64-bit. Internet access is desirable, but is only required when installing TAUDEM on a computer not already equipped with, point, with uh, point .NET Framework 3.5. If you want to produce the hydrographs through Jupyter Notebook, you'll also need internet access. So a little bit about the University of Oklahoma, um, where we record these videos. We are located in Norman, Oklahoma, which is about in the center of the United States, in the center of Oklahoma. There are about 30,000 students that are made up of undergrads, graduate students, law students, and medical students. Uh, right here, uh, where the National Weather Center is, it employs over 600 meteorologists and hydrologists, and it houses the National Severe Storms Laboratory, the School of Meteorology, the Advanced Radar Research Center, and our research group, the Hydrometeorology and Remote Sensing Laboratory, or HYDROS. The HYDROS laboratory is made up of five scientists and faculty, nine postdocs and visitors, 15 graduate students, and several alumni. And this is from all over the world. Our research focuses are on quantitative precipitation estimates, hydrologic modeling, and that's where EF5 came about, as well as the Flooded Locations and Simulated Hydrograss Project, which is a suite of flash flood forecasting tools in the United States that's used operationally. 
EF5 is also included in the project for NASA SEVERE. So SEVERE is a joint venture between NASA and the United States Agency for International Development. And this program, um, the goal of this program is to improve environmental decision making in developing nations by using satellite-based observation data in science applications so that uh, developing nations are able to better forecast and make better decisions about uh, severe weather. There are, several, there are several centers throughout the world, and they focus on floods, fires, droughts, frost, and many other subjects. So now we're moving on to the QGIS installation process. Uh, this video, you can find this video in the welcome video of the original EF5 training. Once you've done that, um, we use QGIS and Towden for several reasons. First of all, QGIS, can, uh, QGIS has lots of plugins that you can use for various reasons. QGIS runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, and other systems. And while ArcGIS runs only on Windows. And then a big thing that we use QGIS for is that it's free and open source. It costs you nothing and has a community of thousands of users and supporters. So if you ever have a question, you can always Google a problem and there's probably an answer for you. Um, commercial solutions like Esri's ArcGIS cost thousands of dollars per workstation, um, while there's commercial support for QGIS is available from third parties. So thank you for joining me for the welcome video. Our next module will be Ensemble Outputs, and you can follow along with me in your EF5 Advanced folder, Presentations Directory. Thank you very much.